<laughs> Two days ago, I was on stage with uh, Obama's CTO, Anish Chopra, and I told him, I am pissed because I'm an American and I've had a great life. I grew up in Cupertino, a mile from Apple Computer, and I've seen the valley grow up around me. I live in paradise. But as I travel around the world and meet lots of entrepreneurs as my uh, duties as Rackspace, I'm seeing some storm clouds coming. Our kids, the kids who are gonna be born next year, are gonna graduate as a class of 2030. And this is gonna be a look at what we can do to inspire them and help them reach the goals that these guys did. These guys, uh, Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple's there, and uh, Al Acorn, who started a uh, video game industry, and others, Don Norman. I go around the world and I study people like Yi Yi. She developed the fa fail whale for Twitter. And I watch, I, I go around the world and I, I study the joy that we have with play. This is my son. And I had to get my son's picture in there because other people have done that. <laughs> <laughs> I look for the surprise that they have when they get uh, something cool, and that's my other son. <laughs> and of course I blog it. My entire life is being blogged, he says. But more seriously, we're about halfway between my generation, a little bit more than halfway between my generation, which uh, graduated in the early 1980s, to this new generation, the 2030 generation. Think back, I didn't have an iPhone, an iPad, I didn't have the internet, I didn't have a data center. <laughs> I didn't have all sorts of things that we take for granted now. I didn't have a projector like this, I didn't have wireless communication, I'm not even hooked up to the Wi-Fi here. One thing I've learned by traveling and meeting with these innovators and entrepreneurs is learning is constant. Steve Wozniak, walked me around the Computer History Museum in, Mont in Mountain View and said, you know, here I learned this, here I learned this, here I learned this, here I learned this, and that led to the Apple II, and then he kept learning even after that. He, he's uh, always been an inspiration to me. Our kids today know that the controller of our screens is our social graph. I have an app called Show You, which you might not have seen yet, <coughs> but you put your Twitter, your Facebook, and your YouTube in here, and it brings you videos that you have shared with me. So my social graph is controlling me. Coders rule. Um, everything in our life is going to have code in it. His DJ machine has code in it. The screen has code in it. This has code in it. This has code in it. All, our ca cars have code in it. And therefore, we haven't been teaching our kids how to code. I, my son hasn't taken a programming class. He's 17 years old, right? We need engineers and scientists to get into this new world. Here's the credit card of the future. Inside is a little memory board with code and with chips, really thin stuff. Engineers are needed to build this new world, right? Everything is connected, the kids know. They know who this kid is. And they're all connected. They know that mastery is more important than knowledge. We already have the world's knowledge here. We don't need more knowledge. We need more mastery to build things like the lights of the future, which is what he's holding there in a, in a fab in Livermore, California. We know that curio curiosity is necessary that's where the innovations are going to come from. I talked with a guy over in Europe who built a new kind of board game on top of the iPad. He built little pieces that he sticks on here, and the iPad senses them without having any electricity or any electronic components in the, in the pieces. No cameras watching it, no sensor. Well, he, he figured out just by watching his kids and thinking about the problem that you could pass your fingertips touch to the screen through these new kinds of board games. So he's going to have a new kind of board game coming out. You know, this is my son playing with Legos. But we're, we're, our kids are, uh, need these. Our kids need to be entrepreneurial. They're not going to work for big companies. Uh, m many of them aren't. And we're not teaching them how to start companies, how to, how to deal with venture capitalists, how to deal with financial institutions. I was talking with the NFL player rep, and he says the NFL players are not learning even how to get uh, direct deposit checks into their accounts. 
you know. If you want to inspire your kids, take them out to an Indy race car, uh, a, a race someday, in Indianapolis 500. Every single person on that team has a PhD. And I, 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 that blew me away. I was like, this is a car, you know. I thought you could get on the race team just by working with carburetors or, you know, fuel injectors or whatnot. No, they have an aerodynamics engineer. They have so many sensors on their car. They have computer engineers who work on the car. They have material scientists who study the tr tires and other things. You know, I went and visited Oakley Sunglasses. This is their headquarters down in, in uh, Los Angeles. And uh, they're spraying atomic thin film onto plastic. And they're trying to find new ways to do new things. Everybody there was a PhD too, pretty much, except for the people putting together the glasses. It's one of the few manufacturing plants we have left in the United States, actually, which is a real credit to their company. But we, we aren't teaching our kids the skills that they're going to need to work in these modern factories, right? China is. India is. I went and talked with Blendtec Blender, you know, Tom, Tom Dixon. You might have seen him on YouTube. He's, his first video got to 6 million views in the first week, and he's been watched hundreds of millions of times now. And he blends all sorts of fun stuff. He found uh, the, the video was funny how he found it. He, he was testing his blender by putting a rake handle into it, and, he, and an employee came in the next morning and saw all the sawdust all around. And he said, what the heck were you doing? He goes, oh, just blending different things, testing out my new blender. And he said, Let's put that on YouTube. It was a total accident. What's really funny is this guy is an uh, engineer. But every time he pointed to something on the blender that he developed, it was an accident. For instance, uh, the blade now has these wingtips. I said, well, how did you come up with that? Because the old, the old blenders, if you look at an old blender, are just straight crisscross blades. He said, well, uh, I, would, I couldn't fit the blade <laughs> into my blender. <laughs> so I bent it up. <laughs> And he said, the next prototype, I, I cut him off because it looked crappy, <laughs> and it stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> and he, said, he said, the problem with blending is uh, the, the, the blade will cavitate, will build an air layer underneath the food, and it won't blend. And uh, the old, his competitor was using a, a plunger to plunge the material down into the blade, and he found a, a new way to build a blade. And, and you know, that's, that's how innovation is done. But do we teach kids to have accents at school and try things and play? Not really. We teach them to the tests now, tests that aren't necessarily uh, what we need to know for tomorrow's kids. I went and visited IBM Batteries Research uh, over where this is the room where the hard drive was invented. And now they're studying how to build batteries for the cars of about 10 years from now. And they have this uh, spectrometer machine, and everybody in that room has a PhD and is a scientist. And they can't hire enough scientists to build the batteries of the future. So s somebody is. Somebody's going to build this. Pisses me off that it probably is not going to be American. The, the, this is the Stanford self-driving car, which is the prototype for the Google self-driving car that you saw on CNN and stuff like that. This is a LiDAR machine, a, a laser. It has 80 lasers, and it sweeps 30 times a second and makes a 3D image of the world it's in. This thing was built by Velodyne. And if you are into s stereo equipment, Velodyne built subwoofers in the 1980s. I sold them in my consumer electronics store, but now he's building this, you know. And what are, what are the engineers going to do with that in the future? I don't know. The data coming off that, the way that the real-time data is, is having to be studied by the kids who built that at Stanford are going to build all sorts of new systems. You know, here's the inside of the wind tunnel in, in uh, NASA where every commercial pla plane made has been tested in this tunnel. Are we going to have the kids who are going to understand how to build that? You know, there are some hopeful signs. <laughs> this is a company in Boulder, Colorado, which is making a really fun robot. You'll, it'll come out probably around Christmas time this year. It's called Sphero, and you can, uh, it's, a, it's a robot that you can actually program and do things where you, you can run it from an iPhone, which is a lot of fun. When I go around and I visit companies, I look on the walls for what are they doing innovatively. This is Flipboard's wall. 
and they had a fun sign. I love this sign because it's, we're doing things. We don't know where it's going to go. We don't know where the innovation's coming. And finally, the future, <laughs> the future belongs to the geeks because nobody else wants it. Are we preparing our kids to be geeks of the future? It's the 2030 generations here. Are we ready for them?